Hi, and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. We're going to do something a little new today because you guys requested this in a bunch of different chat boxes during the live stream. So you guys asked us to do this and this is what we're going to do. We're going to start a series on home repairs, home improvement kind of things where we are going to go around and show you guys how to replace switches, outlets, clog drains, all kinds of things. So today we're changing out an outlet. Okay, so we're going to change out an outlet. But before we get into this, let's talk about what tools you'll need. First thing you'll need is some type of a voltmeter, ohm meter, something that will let you know whether or not there is still electricity running to this outlet. You will need a standard or flathead screwdriver to be able to remove the face plate. You will need a Phillips screwdriver to be able to remove the outlet off of the box and your Romex wires off the side of your outlet. <clears throat> now you will also need either a pair of side cutters, wire cutters, dikes, so many names in the English language for this one tool. This or this plier set that comes with, it has the wire cutter and it also has a, the uh, stripper along the bottom. Plus it also has the rounded off tops like Lyman's pliers. I normally use Lyman's pliers, but we have these. I figured I would bring them out to show you. Okay. So these are the tools that you're going to need for this project. Now let's remove the old outlet. Okay, now we want to replace this outlet. The very first thing we have to do safety wise is to see if there's any power going to it. So that's where the voltmeter comes into play or ohm meter depending on which one you have. I'm using a simple voltmeter because it's just basically going to tell me if there's power here or not. You take your tongs out from there, okay? And then you just place them in your outlet, like such. And as you see, hold on, let me get it running again. There's power. You see how there's um, a red dot here that's telling me that it's got juice. And then it's telling me how much juice up there, 120. Okay, your standard household voltage. Okay, so what does that mean? We've got to turn the power off to this outlet. So let's go over to the breaker box and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're over here at the fuse box. Now what fuse box, breaker box, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is where your power comes into your building. Like for our schoolhouse, this is where the power comes in. Then you open up the fuse box, okay, and then on this side of the fuse box you have a um, list of what each breaker runs. Now each spot, if you look, that is how it goes back and forth, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. All of your even numbers are on the right, your odd numbers are on the left. So we want to work on that outlet over there. So that's the back half of the shed or schoolhouse. So we come in here and we look, all right, back half of the shed, boom, it's number four. One, two, three, four, we take it, we flip it, and now we should have no more power at our outlet. So let's go back over to the outlet and check it out. Okay, so we went over to the breaker box, we flipped the breaker. But unless you wired it up, I would always double check because 
things get mislabeled, things get added later on, and then they forget to mark where they put it, blah, blah, blah. So let's test it again. And as you can see, we get nothing. Okay, so this outlet, there's no power getting to it, so it's dead. So now we can remove it safely without getting shocked. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our standard screwdriver, and on your faceplate, you just have one screw. Okay, so we got to remove it. Don't lose it. Take your faceplate off. Put it, just put it off to the side. Okay. Now, on the top of your outlet, top and bottom, you have these mounting screws. Those are the Phillips. The one that's got the X. <clears throat> and so now you have to back this out. Okay. Oh, nice. We got a little extra wire. That's good. Okay. Now, as you can see, your outlet has a white wire and a ground on one side, and then on the other side, it's going to be hard for you guys to see, probably, I might need to spin it around like this, is the black wire, okay, hooked in here. Now, some outlets, they do have these, ha, they do. Okay, you see how your bolts on the side of your outlet on this one are a silver color? Okay, and then the one on this side is a gold color. Okay, the reason why they do that is so that when you are hooking these up, you don't cross them. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. I'm going to take this off so you guys can see them just a little bit better. Okay. See how you got the silver side there. Okay. And then you've got the gold side there. Now, most of the time, when you're, you're at your house, your wiring would be, the white wire is going to be your neutral and the black wire is going to be your hot and then the one without anything obviously is the ground. Now, what does that mean? Okay, the way I was taught, I'm not an electrician so I don't really know 100%, but the hot wire is the power coming in and then the white wire, is the neutral, is the power going back because it's an alternating current, okay? Not like a battery, which is a direct current. This is an alternating current, so it has to travel in a loop. Your ground is just that. It takes any excess power that charges off of this, takes it to that wire, and then takes it straight down to the ground, okay? So, you can hook up your outlets in what they call a daisy chain okay meaning you can bring the power in on the one okay which we put on the gold side it doesn't really matter but you can put it on the gold side and then put your neutral on the other one and then you can run a wire that's not coming from your breaker box from here to another outlet okay that's what it means by daisy chain but you have to have the hot with the hot and the neutral with the neutral. So that's why they color code them to make it simple. So, if you needed to, if you if this one just shorted out or whatever went bad, throw it away. Okay, now your wires here, that's where this would come in. You would find out what gauge it is through this. You just put it on there and you figure out where it is. This is looking like it's going to be a 10 gauge. 
Man, these things are hard. You need some WD-40. Okay? But then you just put it down on the wire. Boop. Close it down. Boop. And then you grab it and pull. And then that'll strip this coating off of the wire. Okay? Then you can take it and make, make yourself this little half moon right here. And the reason why you do that is for it to fit around this bolt and hold up against this area right in there because that's the metal where it's make, get bringing the power stuff to your outlet, okay? So all you do then is wrap it back around, boom, like such. And then screw it tight. Now, another thing that you want to, that I just reminded myself of, is you want to make sure is that your loop goes, like when you're tightening this screw, okay? I'm spinning the screwdriver this way. So as this tightens down, it's gonna pull that wire around, okay? So if I had the loop going the other way with it, it would try to kick it out. This is just a good cheat way to make sure you get a good solid connection. Just tighten it down halfway decent, boop, boop. Do the other side the same way. Because now on this side, I'm rotating my, spinning my screwdriver in the opposite directions. So my hoop had to go in the opposite direction. Okay, now that's all done. I can twist it up here. I can get my ground and wrap it around. Like such. Hook it in there really well. Grab my Phillips. Tighten it down. Okay, you see how that kicked it out? See that? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. So let me take this back out. Boop, boop. Really, I was paying attention. I just did that so y'all could see it. Don't you believe it. I grab it with these. Spin it this away. There we go. Ah! <laughs> I'm just playing. There's no power, remember? Okay, tighten it back down. Now, if you see right here, they've got these notches on the ground. Doom, doom. You can also take your, this is why I like to use lineman pliers, and you can pinch. Or a Leatherman. Pinch it. That way it also hugs it just a little bit better. Like that. Because sometimes if you don't get it up over those notches, it'll kick it out too. Well, then you just tighten it down. Now here comes the tricky part. Okay? You've got your what they call a conduit box. That's what this blue thing is. Okay? You've only got so much room in here to be able to fit all of this in. Now this had another um, more wires going to it than the we'd have more stuff to fit in this box. So this one's not going to be that hard. But in other ones you may have two sets of wires going in here. Okay? Well you just got to feed it all back in there 
till it fits because it came out of there it'll go back okay and then just screw it back in now here is some little nifty cheat codes that you might want to say if you just got to replace the outlet and you don't have to replace any wiring just put the wires on your new outlet exactly how they came off your old one that way you don't have to worry about anything now this how to wire this up is just how you wire up a standard outlet we're going to get into being able to wire up a GFI later on okay and that's the those GFIs are the outlets that you see in your kitchen or in your bathroom that have that button that you have to push to make it uh, work if it trips because it's got a basically it's got a uh, its own little extra breaker that they've started to make um, code and bathrooms and stuff I'll show you how to wire them up um, in a couple of days and then you just put your face plate back on like such now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the breaker box real quick to be honest with you my son is going to run over to the breaker box and flip it and then we'll test it to see if we got power if we got power everything's good to go good to go so let me go over some cheats while he's going over there to flip the box if you don't have a voltmeter or an ohm meter, you can use a desk lamp or a hair dryer or a radio or something like that. Plug it in, turn it on, go over to your breaker box, flip it. When it goes off, you know you've turned the power off to this. Um, this is also just a good way to do it. Boom, boom, bring it in, set it up, and once again, we have power, okay? And that's all there is to it. So, and that's all the tools and stuff that you need for this. I hope this has helped you guys um, be a little bit more confident instead of having to call on an electrician. That outlet is like anywhere from 19 to 30 cents at the Home Depot. Um, versus having to pay maybe a hundred bucks to have an electrician come out and do it. You see it didn't take that long. It's very simple. And you, you can do it yourself. So, I want you to remind you guys, please, if you can, hit that P, check out our Patreon. You can support, give us a little extra support to, for us to be able to continue to, to help us continue to make videos like this one. Thank you. And, uh, Hope you guys enjoy the rewards that go along with it. Don't forget to check us out on the web at www.bigbearhomestead.com. There we also have our online store that you guys can pick up t-shirts and nifty things like that. Don't forget that we are live on Mondays and Saturdays, part of the Homestead Network. You can check out everybody's live show times at thehomesteadnetwork.com. That's the homesteadnetwork.com. When you go there, please go up into the upper right hand corner and submit your email. Um, we're not going to spam you. But that's just in case something happens and we have to do a scheduling change. Like if, I don't know, if I was to get hit by a truck, I couldn't go live on Saturday night. So Brad would send, Brad from the Big Family Homestead would send out a mass email. Hey, Big Bear's live stream has been canceled. He got hit by a truck. Go on over to Deep South Homestead or JS Farms 2004 or Off Grid Nation, somebody like that. They're taking us. They're going to be substitute teaching for him that night. That's the only reason why we want you guys to do that because we don't want you guys to miss any shows. You can uh, check us out on uh Facebook, you can give us the old like. Wow, my brain just froze for a second. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram Instagram and Twitter. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this series is really going to help. I know on our channel it's a lot of, lot of women, a lot of females 
And I hope this gives you ladies the confidence that you need in order to do this. You, you ladies can do this. I have faith in you. Thanks for coming by. And like always, have a nice day.